God, it's good to be back. Oh, sorry, uh, film festival. Don't ask. Right, well, let's cut to the chase. I've been gone for far too long, and I got a beast of a book to review. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm Reviews. Sit back and relax as we dive into A Storm of Swords, book three of A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. Oh, Okay, I got to summarize over 2,000 pages across two books in 10 minutes. There's no turning back here. Spoilers ahead! Let's start with the Wall of the North. Last time, the members of the Night Watch went beyond the Wall to figure out what's going on with these White Walkers, only to find out the Wildlings are grouping together under the King Beyond the Wall. Mace Rider means to break the Wall and bring Red War to the Seven Kingdoms. Well, that's a game two can play. A game of... Thrones. Boo! You suck! Well, what do you expect? I've been gone for a month. I'm a little rusty. Jon Snow was sent on a scouting mission, but his group was ambushed by the Wildlings. Before they took his life, the leader of the group, Corrin Halfhand, orders Jon to kill him and join the Wildlings to figure out what their plan is. Jon follows his orders, and while skeptical, is accepted by the Wildlings, which makes Jon uneasy. I will see and hear and learn, and when I have, I will carry the word back to the wall. The wildlings have taken him for an oath breaker, but in his heart, he was still a man of the Night's Watch, doing the last duty that Corrin Halfhand had laid on him before I killed him. Not making matters easy is the woman Ygritte, who believes John is one of them, and John finds himself falling in love with her. Meanwhile in Westeros, everyone is all over the place now. We have Arya, who just escaped Harrenhal, trying to get to her mother in the Riverlands, all the while beginning to realize she has quite a taste for killing. Sansa is still captive in King's Landing. While she's no longer proposed to marry Joffrey, he's marrying to another house. She waits on the hopes of a promise that will set her free. Sir Dantos had promised he would help me escape, but not until the night of Joffrey's wedding. There was nothing to do until then, but endure and count the days. All the while, Kathleen is dealing with the idea that all her children are basically dead, only to have Rob botch everything up by marrying another woman, which puts strains on his alliance with House Frey. And Bran is traveling with Jojen and Mira Reed, who tried to warn Bran about Theon's betrayal, but now with Winterfell in ruins, are off to the north to meet the Three-Eyed Crow, while everyone thinks he's dead. You got all that? Good, cause we ain't done yet. At King's Landing, everyone's favorite underdog Tyrion is coming off from a successful victory over the Battle of Blackwater, and gets rewarded by being demoted by his father, having Joffrey take all the credits, my airlings betray me, my friends are scourged and shame, and I lie here rotting, Tyrion thought. I thought I won the bloody battle. Is this what triumph tastes like? And is now forced to marry Sansa for political reasons. Yeah, life isn't looking good for Tyrion, but when has life ever been fair to him? Meanwhile, Davos is actually given a character as he survives the Battle of Blackwater and is now trying to find a way to get back at the Red Woman Melisandre for the botched battle. And to finally top it all off, out east, Daenerys meets with the mysterious Arston Whitebeard, promising to bring her back to Westeros to build an army. But Mormont tells her about Slaver's Bay. What is there for me in Slaver's Bay? A plot. An army, said Sir Joran. If Strong Bell was, it's so much to your liking. You could buy hundreds more like him out of the fighting pits of Miren. But it is Astropor I set me sails for. And Astropor, you can buy Unsullied. Which leads her on a journey to destroy slavery in Slaver's Bay. Did you get all that? Did you get all that? We all clear? Good, because I barely even scratched the surface of this book. Game of Thrones books are known for being huge and epic but A Storm of Swords is on a whole other level. This is my favorite book of the series overall, mainly because this is the first payoff book of the series. 
That's not to discredit the previous two. Game of Thrones set up the stage and stakes for us. A Clash of Kings moved the pieces. But A Storm of Swords is where everything built up from the last two books reaches its first thunderous climax. I'm almost willing to say everything about this book is perfect. Yeah, there are chapters that do nothing more than to have someone move from point A to B, but what makes those chapters worth it is having the book lead to some of the most iconic moments in the series. So much so that they have to make two seasons for the show. You want to know the moments it features? The Red Wedding, the Purple Wedding, the Battle for the Wall, Oberon's fight with the Mountain, the Trial of Tyrion, the Slave Rebellion, and in terms of deaths? A better question would be, who doesn't die? The book cranks it to 11 to remind you that no one is safe, as characters, both beloved and hated, Major and Minor, are killed in gory fashion, and all the characters are memorable. There is not a weak one in the bunch. Even the prologue and epilogue since they end with some of the biggest moments. It even pulls the amazing feats of turning Jamie from your classic douchebag into a tragic figure you start to like. Not many men dare name me monster to my face. Though behind my back, they speak freely enough. I have no doubt. And again, I'm only barely touching what this book has to offer. This isn't an epic. It's a mega epic, where Martin's writing shines the most. I love the first two, but it was this book that made me a fan. I didn't feel like I was reading a world. I was living it. I'm willing to say this is the perfect song of Ice and Fire book. Far none. Everything from the events, character arcs, twists, deaths, and lore are given their all. There's a reason I took over a month to read this book. And believe me, you'll not regret a single second reading it. The follow-up, though... That's another review. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion about A Storm of Swords? If you have a book you would like me to review, let me know in the comments below. Next week, we leave the world of man to travel to a place where the animals walk and talk. Next week is Furry Month. Till next time, have a nice day. It's a nice day for a white wedding. It's a nice day to